All right, everybody. I'm going to, um, cause I give you my take on everything that's going on with the SEC lawsuit and ripple and how this is going on. But I actually caught a clip where you can hear the CEO of ripple commenting on what's going on right now. Currently, this actually happened yesterday. So have a listen. Ripple has wrapped up its flagship Swell conference here in Dubai. I spoke with Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse on stage at the event. I asked about Ripple's battle with the Securities and Exchange Commission over the status of its XRP token and what Ripple's recent court win means for the scope of SEC power over the crypto space. Listen in. Ripple has had three consecutive victories over the SEC on this. First, the judgment on July 13th saying very clearly XRP is not in and of itself a security. Uh, second, the denial by the court for their, their request for an interlocutory appeal. And third, the uh, dismissal with prejudice, the charge, the allegations against Chris Larson and myself. So, uh, you know, look, one of the things that people talk about is one of the definitions of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and thinking you'll get a different outcome. The SEC is doing the same thing over and over again and they think, I guess, they're going to get a different outcome. At some point, and you and I talked also backstage about a, a grayscale, also had, a, a, I think, an important victory in the United States about the Bitcoin ETF, where the, the judge, again, there's a federal judge talking about a federal agency in the SEC saying, quote, the SEC is being arbitrary and capricious. You know, generally... Judges tend to be pretty, you know, down the middle and try to not be uh, dramatic. Like, those are damning words. So I, I think at some point the SEC has to step back and realize that their approach of regulation through enforcement, let's just bring lawsuits, that, that has to break. So walk me through the next steps in this case. Today was the deadline for the briefing schedule for the remedies. The SEC wants something like $770 million in disgorgement. Yeah. What happens next? Well, I, 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 uh, in a session that I did in Washington yesterday, I made the joke around, I, I'd like to see the Vegas odds on, you know, what what could be the what's called the remedies from the, the case look it, it, i think we the sec in my opinion has lost sight of their mission to protect investors and the, the question is who are they protecting in this journey and it, it turns out that the court will make the judge will make a decision about remedies we actually welcome that uh, i think that in this case you look at what in what investors were harmed and you also have to look at the securities laws and understand, are there exemptions for institutional and you know, accredited investors and things like that? But look, I, I think it is a positive step for the industry, not just for Ripple, not just for Chris and Brad, but for the whole industry that the SEC has been put in check in the United States. And I'm hopeful this will be kind of uh, a, a thawing of the, the permafrost in the United States for you know, really seeing an amazing industry that has immense potential thrive in the largest economy in the world. All right, so now there you go. Now you have it directly from the CEO. What's the take on it? As you see, Ripple's not like, oh my God, we're dying. Oh my God. Actually, no, they, they, they had an amazing, amazing conference. And what came out of it is new partnerships, tons of banks doing implementation, a lot of breaking news as far as tokenization, the next endeavor, as far as like HSBC with the gold and everything else like that. So I, I, I have no problem. 2024, we're going to be chilling. But now you understand what's going on. OK, it's just bureaucracy for no reason. And at the end of the day, listen. Accredited investors and institutes, I get it. There has to be certain, you know, rules and stuff like that. I get that. But at the end of the day, we're killing an American industry. Blockchain, what it could do for the new American tech sector, whatever. But everybody's just going overseas. Think about it. Where are we tokenizing gold? The UK, not here. So there you go. Now you know.